on down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Exciting in the newspaper? Oh, you know the Hootable World Guardian. Something earth shaking every week. <laughs> How about that for a headline? Frog Pond Doom. Is that it? <laughs> kind of makes you clutch your throat with excitement, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, I think Sam Drucker's losing his grip as a newspaper man. Speaking of exciting, that's my boy, good old Steve. What's the matter? You have to fly so dangerously? Oh, that ain't dangerous. What can happen? He's only flying ten feet off the ground. Go on, Steve. What happened next? You were 40,000 feet up, and your oxygen supply had conked out, and you were losing consciousness. And if it hadn't been for my CO's voice and my headset, I'd have ended up in the drink. What did he say? What did he say? <laughs> he said if I crashed my plane and drown, he'd... Cancel my three-day pass in Honolulu. <laughs> Imagine being in such danger and able to joke about it. Well, that's the way flyers are, I guess. Tell us more, Steve. Yeah. Well, once up in the Aleutians, the field was socked in. We were running low on gas, and the only place I could land was on an ice floe. Ooh, that sounds dangerous already. Them girls sure scare easy. When I was flying a jetty back in WW1, we didn't even have oxygen tanks. Wouldn't have done no good anyway. There was no such thing as oxygen. <laughs> Let's hear more. Yeah. How many narrow escapes have you had, anyway? Enough. Look, that isn't exactly a pilot's favorite topic of conversation, narrow escapes. So if you excuse me, I have some studying to do on my crop dusting lines. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, it's scary just being near someone who's faced death like that. Oh, it sure is. Yeah. Oh, Steve. Yes, ma'am? Um, have you ever thought of going into another line of work? Besides flying? Not really. I mean, it's the only thing I've ever done. <laughs> of course, if things don't pick up, I may have to think of something. Right, Uncle Joe? <laughs> oh, yeah. What are you trying to do? Break up my dynasty? You know he's the chief pilot for the Carson Elliott Air Service. I also know that he's a fine young man and that my daughters are more than a little interested in him. That's right. You might just end up being your son-in-law. Think of that. I am thinking of that. And I'm also thinking that I'd like to have a live son-in-law. <laughs> One roadblock after another. Winter Barbell and Wilbur had as much trouble getting started. <laughs> Mom, listen to what I wrote for English class. Go ahead, I'm listening. Asked to recall the most fascinating person I ever met instantly leaves to mind the colorful personality of Major General Alexander Wilkinson Gibney. Instantly leaves to mind who? Major General Alexander Wilkinson Gibney. Oh, him! He was Steve Elliott's commanding officer in the Air Force. Oh. Well, I thought your assignment was to write about some fascinating person that you know. Let's face it, Mom. Who do I know that's fascinating? Thanks. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. But I still think you ought to write your own theme about somebody you know. But this is my theme. I wrote every word. Steve just gave me the basic facts and helped me make it more colorful. Well, after all, he majored in journalism in college. He did? Well, sure. He was editor of the campus paper. Oh. Isn't that interesting? Want to hear more? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Alexander Gibney was first in his class at the academy, became a full colonel at 26, and today is in charge of the special wing of the Strategic Air Command. Isn't that wonderful? 
And he was editor of the campus newspaper, huh? Hi, Kate. Don't hi, Kate, me, Sam Drucker. What kind of a newspaper are you running? Something wrong? Look at this headline. Frog pond doomed. Well, it is, Kate. There ain't enough water left in there to dampen a frog's ankles. <laughs> you went on for three columns about those frogs and not one line about the fire in Crabwell Corners. What fire in Crabwell Corners? What fire? You must be the only one in the valley that doesn't know the ice plant burned down. No kidding. Must have left quite a puddle. <laughs> you get that, Kate? You said the ice plant burned it. down. I got it, I got it, The point is, here you are running a newspaper, and a big story like this happens, and you don't even mention it. Well, Kate, they just didn't phone it in. Phone it in? Criminently, Kate, with all I gotta do, I ain't got time to run around looking for news. If something happens, folks just gotta phone it in, like Stacy Whitcomb did with his frog pond. <laughs> well, aren't you interested in going out and, and, and digging up the news? You wanna know a secret, Kate? I ain't even much interested in running a paper. It just takes too blame much time. How'd you like somebody to run it for you? Hmm? I know just the young man. College graduate, majored in journalism, bright, energetic. Oh, Sam, you'd be doing me such a favor if you'd offer him the job. Steve Elliott, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, if he wants it, he's got it. Oh, Sam, you know something you're wonderful. Just wonderful. Bless you. <laughs> Hold on. This mushy stuff is kind of fun. <laughs> Get off of that chair. <laughs> While you've been loafing, I've been tramping over this whole valley scouting for insects. Trying to get my dynasty off the ground. There ain't an insect in 50 miles of here. <laughs> Not them. I mean the crop-eating kind. <laughs> the new editor of the Hootable World Guardian. That is, if you take the job. Sam Drucker says you'll be in charge of the whole shebang. Well, that's very nice of you, Mrs. Bradley, but flying is my racket. <laughs> How many flying jobs have you got lined up right now, Steve? <laughs> you win, Mrs. Bradley. That news would probably destroy you. But I'm all ready to put into operation a plan that will overcome her move. <laughs> That's why you're only a dog, and I'm the brains of the Carson Elliott Empire. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. I just don't need my crops dusted again this year. Don't need it? Newt, look at your cabins. Laying there defenseless, crying out for help. I don't hear nothing. Not yet. But in a minute, you'll hear the roar of a low-flying airplane swooping in over your cabbages, making pass after pass. What's the matter? Nothing. I'm just releasing spray. What for? Kill the bugs, you ninny. What bugs? The bugs that are eating your cabbage. Joel, there ain't a bug on the farm. There's got to be. You got green bugs? Grasshoppers, mites, fireworms, grubworms, leafworms, gypsy moth, aphids, hicks, ladybugs. Nary a one. Some farmer. You sure must have a miserable crop. Even the insects won't touch it. <laughs> Hold it. Don't move, Roy. 
and scared him away. Scared who away? That Romanian corn beetle. He was about to sink his teeth in one of your choicest, juiciest ears of corn. Oh, thanks a lot. But he'll be back. Them Romanians never give up. Roy, it's a lucky thing for you I just happened by. Them beetles not only chew the stalk right down to the ground, they go in after the roots. Oh, get out of the way. In a few weeks, Roy Turlock, you'll be standing sadly in your chawed up field while the other farmers are hauling their crops into market because they paid attention to the slogan, Spray Day is Payday. Come to think of it, I do have one pest I'd like to get rid of. I'll sign you up for crop dusting. What is it, a chawing pest or a boring pest? It's a boring pest. And it weighs about 185 pounds and wears a checkered shirt. And I wish you'd get off my land. Okay, Roy. Just wait till them remaining beetles come a-swarming down. You'll be hollering for help. You'll see. <laughs> Uh, no, he's out in the field. I told you, he's a real reporter. Well, he ain't exactly reporting, he's delivering groceries. <laughs> Sam, he's a newspaper man. Oh, sure, sure, only we're combining the jobs during this temporary slow period. Oh. News pretty scarce, huh? Yeah, well, put it this way. The biggest item since Steve joined the paper is that he joined the paper. <laughs> oh, Sam, I hope he doesn't get discouraged. No, I hope not either. He's a nice, bright boy. Oh, here he comes now. Hi, Mrs. Bradley. Hi, Steve. Mr. Drucker, Mrs. Hendricks made a payment on her bill. Say, that's a news item in itself. <laughs> well, how's it going? Oh, great. I just picked up a real stop-the-press item. Fred Ziffel is throwing a birthday party for his pig, Arnold. <laughs> well, that is sort of newsy. Well, actually, it's newsier than you think. Fred invited the mayor of Crabwell Corners. Arnold heard about it, threw a fit, and the whole thing's been called off. <laughs> How come? The mayor is also the butcher. <laughs> but seriously, I'm afraid this isn't going to work out. I appreciate the opportunity and your generosity, but I guess I'm used to a little more activity. Oh, there you are, Steve. Say, what a tough break. I had this charter flight all lined up and it fell through. The mayor of Crabwell Corners was going to this birthday party. We know, you... Uncle Joe, we know. <laughs> Don't worry, boy. I'll get us something else. Oh, I know you're trying, Uncle Joe, but... Hold it. Don't say the discouraging word. Well, he's not discouraged, just being practical, facing fact. Well, uh, maybe he don't know all the facts. He don't know, for instance, that I've come up with the greatest idea in the world of crop dust. What's that? This is the world shaking. You'd better be sitting when you hear it, else you'll go over backwards. I think I can handle it. <laughs> what is the idea, Joe? I'm mixing perfume. With insect spray. Just imagine. You make this whole field of garlic smell like lilac sachet. I got another idea. Okay, okay. You'll see. One day my idea is going to click and make us all another John D. Rockefeller. Well, I guess my future is here. What there is of it. Oh, now, don't be upset about the newspaper business. My goodness, that's the way it is. Sometimes things are very quiet, and all of a sudden, everything breaks loose. Right, Sam? Uh, that's right. That's the way it was before the frog pond drain. Everything is quiet, and then bingo. <laughs> Exciting things are happening all the time. But the, the Guardian is full of them. Well, well, look, you can take any issue at run. Well, listen to this headline. Gumdrop machine refilled at Hooterville Depot. <laughs> well, sir... Some weeks are more exciting than others. All right. Now we'll see if you're worth your salt. If you see any insects, you point. You get it? Any bug. Grub worms, beetles, aphids, grasshoppers. And we'll fill this here sack with the bugs. We we'll scatter them around among the farms and create a demand for crop dusting. We we'll start looking. <coughs> Got a scent already, huh? Go get him! Go get him! Go get him, boy! Good boy. Found a whole nest of them. You do a good job for me, you'll wind up as field supervisor. A whole staff of dogs under you. <laughs> I might have known. 
known you couldn't handle responsibility. Field supervisor. You ain't even fit to be office boy. Well, this only means one thing. I'll have to put plan B into effect. <laughs> telling you you can get five years in Leavenworth for what you're doing, and it's just as for the peace I can give them to you. That ain't for you. That's from the Hardy Har Har Novelty Company. I know that. It's addressed to the president of the Carson Elliott dynasty. Well, that's me. You're delaying my empire. <laughs> some real bugs, I wouldn't have had to send for these reading with the exact facsimiles. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, are you sure you need these? You're not just ordering them on my account. Oh, no, Steve. We, we've been planning this ad campaign for the Shady Rest for years. And, and I, I love the slogan you thought up for the flyer. Come to the restful Shady Rest, where you can rest... Shame. This <laughs> says it all. Well, I'll get started. Oh, Mr. Drucker's out on a delivery. Oh, well, you go ahead. I'll get it for you. Drucker's door. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's me, sir. Uh, well, uh, Steve is busy at the moment. Can I help you? What? A story? Well, just a minute, I get a pencil. <laughs> okay, shoot. Uh, new calorie reports, what? Six striped cabbage beetles and a tomato worm on his farm. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I wrote it, I wrote it down. And you call in if you get any more scoops like that, Sarah. Uh -huh. Bye. Well, I'll admit that half a dozen cabbage beetles isn't the biggest story in the world, but it's a novelty around here. Sure, I could put it under oddities in the news. <laughs> You again, Sarah, huh? Bert Russell's found what on his farm? Nine rutabaga weevils. Huh? And Vernon Moomau reports... Vernon Moomau reports 16 potato bugs, five grasshoppers, and a sow bug. Oh, you do that, Sarah. That's what we're here for, to handle the big news. <laughs> Looks like oddities in the news is going to cover the whole front page. Let me see that again. You know, Steve, this may be bigger than you think. This valley hasn't had insects like these in years. <laughs> for shocking yet. Why, you... What are you sure about? I'll put it back just the way it was. <laughs> ain't it gonna grow now? Oh, it ain't. You broke it right half in two. Good heavens, what is that? <laughs> I warned you, they never give up. <laughs> Romanian corn beetles? I'm sorry, Roy. You had such a nice stand of corn here, too. 
few hours, you'll have nothing left but a bunch of toothless corn cobs hanging from green lace. <laughs> Friend, I can't bear to stay and watch it. <laughs> Working great. You're a lucky dog to get a first-hand view of a real brain in operation. You ought to be taking notes of this. <laughs> been invaded by bugs. You mean the stories that Sarah's been spreading are true? You better believe it. Radio Pixley even canceled poker parade so they could give on the spot coverage. Hey, I better get out and cover that for the Guardian. We'll take some citronella. Steve, <laughs> forget the story. You're a crop duster. You've got to get in your plane and save this valley. How about that? For a minute, I was forgetting I'm a pilot. Say, maybe this newspaper game really does get in your blood. Steve, <laughs> scramble! <laughs> You must have half the valley sprayed by now. You know, the publicity we get from this job ought to attract crop dust and offers from California, Florida, Oregon, maybe even Siberia. <laughs> Don't you worry, Kate. Steve will kill every bug pest in this valley. What about these? What are those? I found them under your bed when I was cleaning your room. Oh. That just proves Steve's doing a good job. They not only crawl under the bed, but they crawl in jars and screw the lids down. <laughs> The hardy har novelty company. Life is like insects fool your friends. Kate, that's top secret. You let that news out in our empire will topple. They'll ride me out of town on a rail. They'll ride you into town, straight to jail. <laughs> what do you think they do to people who perpetrate a fraud? Now, wait a minute. I didn't mean to do anything bad. Oh, well, then you tell the judge you're sorry, and maybe he'll let you write I was a bad boy 500 times on the blackboard. <laughs> I just hope that Steve gets off that easily. Steve? He didn't do anything. Maybe not, but he's your partner. Nobody's going to believe he wasn't in on it. Now, wait a minute. Look, Kate, I'll take the rap. I'll go pack my clothes for South America. <laughs> hey, how about credit for an IOU? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, Kate. Uncle Joe? In here, Steve. Well, it's all over. I've dusted every farm between here and Pixley. Well, do you want to tell him or should I? Well, you see, I, I think there's something you ought to know. Um, Have you things to do with these? <laughs> you know already, huh? I found out when I landed to tell the farmers there'd be no charge because it was an emergency. You didn't collect any money? No, it didn't seem right. Hot dog, did you hear that, Kate? They can't do anything to us. They ain't got no habeas corpus. <laughs> how did the farmers take it when they found out? Well, a few were mad at first. Then some said it demonstrated how valuable it was to have a crop duster right here in the valley. Next thing I knew, they were all signing up for regular service on an annual basis. <laughs> how about that? Yeah, how about that? <laughs> well, I guess this writes the end to your newspaper career. Well, let's face it, I wasn't exactly a threat to Drew Pearson. <laughs> Excuse me, I want to tell Billy Joe the good news. Well, you lucked out again. Oh, I don't know. It worked out pretty much the way I had it planned. The <laughs> way you had it planned? With a few minor changes. <laughs> oh, that's like saying that Custer's last stand worked out the way General Custer had it planned. With a few minor changes. <laughs> Who's going to be in Vertivision tonight? Here are a few hits. It's not that woman. It's not that young lady. And it's not that guy. Give up? It's that girl. Catch six back to back episodes of That Girl tonight, starting at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, only on TV Land. Now stay tuned for Green Acres. 
as Hooterville Saturday continues here in TV Land.